U.S. Navy has dispatched a small armada to the South China Sea. The carrier John C. Stennis, two destroyers, two cruisers, and the 7th Fleet flagship have sailed into the disputed waters in recent days, according to military officials. The carrier strike group is the latest show of force in the tense region, with the U.S. asserting that China is militarizing the region to guard its excessive territorial claims. Stennis is joined in the region by the cruisers Antietam in Mobile Bay and the destroyers Chung Hoon in Stockdale. The command ship Blue Ridge, the floating headquarters of the Japan-based 7th Fleet, is also in the area en route to a port visit in the Philippines. Stennis deployed from Washington State back on January 15th. The standoff has been heating up on both sides. After news in February that the Chinese deployed an advanced surface-to-air missile battery to the Parcel Islands, U.S. Pacific Command Head Adam Harry Harris told lawmakers that China was militarizing the South China Sea. Quote, in my opinion, China is clearly militarizing the South China Sea, Harris testified on February 24th. You'd have to believe in a flat earth to believe otherwise. Six nations in the region lay claim to parts of all of the disputed island chains. The Spratly Islands, a collection of reefs, rocks, and other natural features, have been the site of extensive Chinese land reclamation projects in the last two years. China has begun constructing islands on top of reefs and claiming territorial seas around them to gain exclusive fishing and resource rights to most of South China Sea. These disputes have led to violence in the past. In 1974, a conflict between South Vietnam and China led to a shootout in the Parcel Islands, located between Vietnam and China's Hainan Island. That dispute continues to this day. Whatever the case may be, the situation in the South China Sea is getting worse by the day. I have reported on the atrocities, the violations of human rights by the United States government in countries around the world. In 2011, we saw them do this against Libya. And also in that same year, we saw them carrying out a policy that the Bush administration had established of overthrowing Syria being carried out. And now we see a continuation of that. And we even see the United States and its allies threatening Russia. Now, of course, Russia will not take any of that lying down. There will be war. And it appears Russia is preparing for exactly that. Let's take, for example, a few days ago, Russia initiated a United Nations Security Council meeting to establish a resolution about the sovereignty of Syria. Why this discussion, this resolution about the sovereignty of Syria? Syria is, in fact, a sovereign nation. But the reason why Russia had called for this United Nations Security Council meeting is because Turkey is threatening to send troops into Syria. Not only Turkey, but Saudi Arabia and others are making these threats and even, to some degree, even making preparations for it. There are reports and pictures of Turkey just across the border into Syria digging trenches. That is a violation of Syria's sovereignty. But you know the United States, Britain, France, they care nothing about sovereignty. Even the other day, the United States just willy-nilly flew right into Libya and bombed and killed several people, many of them innocents, in Libya. Not only did the United States, Britain, and France reject this, but they rejected this in a nasty sort of way. Talking about rejecting the United Nations Security Council resolution proposed by Russia. An example of the nonsense, the crazy talk coming from the French foreign minister, Franco's he stated that Russia is contributing towards a dangerous military escalation that could easily get out of control. But this is what the French are saying. Now remember, under Nicolas Sarkozy, it was France that led the war that started in Libya, that turned Libya into a terrorist state. And then we have Samantha Powers, Obama's appointment to the United Nations. She states that Russia's resolution is just meant to distract the world. This is all crazy talk coming from imperialists who enslaved African peoples around the world. Russia never did that. 
And to top all of this off, the other supporters of these criminals, such as the Ukraine, Spain, New Zealand, all of them are savage violators of people's human rights of the past and to some degree even today. They're all standing together, all of them. Now, they have made no move, no motion, no real action to stop the actions of Turkey. What has Turkey done? What are they doing? They're moving military vehicles across the border into Syria, into the Afrin region of Syria, and they're setting up posts and trenches in that area. The United States haven't stopped that. Britain, France, none of them have stopped that. So what do they expect Russia to do? Well, Russia is preparing. That is why Russia have sent several advanced attack aircraft into Armenia. Armenia is sitting right on the border with Turkey. They are preparing for war. In the event the United States, Turkey, or any of those NATO members decide they're going to send troops into Syria. Now why are they sending these troops into Syria? They're sending them there because Russia and the Syrian military have been very, very successful in destroying the terrorists that have been backed by the United States, Turkey, Israel, Britain, France, Saudi Arabia, and others. This is why they are now preparing to send troops into Syria. But Russia is prepared, and they're preparing. And Russia will not be alone. You will have Iran, and eventually you will have China. Russia prepares for war against NATO. Identified by black flags. TV crews seldom manage to get so close to militant forces in the area. RT's Lizzie Phelan travelled with the Syrian Kurdish forces, the YPG. They're the main anti-ISIL fighters on the ground and have recently been shelled by Turkey from across the border. We're right next to the Turkish border. Uh, beyond you can see the, the Turkish city of Kilis. The YPG say that uh, al-Nusra have taken down most of their flags because they fear uh, airstrikes uh, since they're excluded from the ceasefire agreement. But we can see three flying here. We're extremely close to al-Nusra positions, uh, not more than 50 meters away from us. From here, we've got an even better view of that al-Nusra flag. I could literally walk there within a minute. of Azaz that Turkey is determined to prevent the YPG from taking. Just a few, just a, a little beyond that, you can see the Bab al Salam border crossing and a heavy flow of vehicles coming from Turkey into Azaz. When we zoom in, we can see uh, Turkish military vehicles, probably around a kilometer away, maybe less. Um, and just in front, there's a, a, another very small village that the YPG here say Al-Nusra uses for training. Beyond that, we can see the Turkish flag flying. That's uh, the Turkish board, the Turkish side of the border. And through that, the YPG says they, they monitor a regular supply of weapons coming from Turkey to that Nusra camp. There's been a heavy buildup of Turkish military presence all along the border with this area. Uh, locals say that this area uh, was attacked around three weeks ago and that Turkey actually seized uh, land from Syria. This wall that has been built was new. They say over a thousand olive trees, which is one of the most important sources of income uh, for people here, were destroyed. Uh, and we can see some Turkish military hardware very close to the border, um, from which the YPG say uh, Turkey has been attacking the city of Afrin itself and surrounding villages. Ankara strenuously denies supporting extremists, despite numerous reports claiming otherwise. Last May, a Turkish opposition news outlet published a video that it claimed showed Turkish intelligence smuggling weapons to Syria. The journalists responsible for the article were arrested and spent three months in jail. Turkish media also reported on Islamic State and other jihadi fighters getting medical treatment in the country's hospitals, something that raised concerns among Turkish MPs. This photo was taken on the 16th of April 2014 at a state hospital in Hatay. We know the identity of this person. He's an Islamic State commander, 
Terrorists are being treated in state hospitals. The health ministry and the foreign ministry need to explain why this is happening. Is there any security on Turkey's national borders? The Russian defense ministry also released, re recently released video evidence showing what it says are trucks smuggling illegal Islamic State oil across the border into Turkey. Ankara has denied any links to the trade. Let's pick this up now with former U.S. diplomat Jim Jatras. Welcome back to RT International. Thanks for coming on the program. So, trucks heading from Turkey into apparent Nusra territory. Does that surprise you? No, not at all. And first off, let me commend RT for reporting on this. And I have to ask myself, what is the likelihood that the American and other Western media will point to this as definite evidence of collusion between the Turkish government of President Erdogan and uh, these terrorists in Syria, in this case al-Nusra, this is al-Qaeda. How can they pretend to be part of an anti-terrorist effort when it's quite clear that they are very closely supporting these terrorists? When it comes to, um, we've had all the denials about supporting terrorists, but the Turkish Prime Minister has also admitted that they do provide support for the moderate rebels. As, as most people know now, that's a very muddy picture on who is moderate, who is a terrorist, who supports who in that part of the world right now. How can they tell who is moderate and who isn't? Well, there's a word for this in English. It's called lying. He's simply lying that these are not moderates of any sort. These are jihadists, that they're indistinguishable from al-Nusra, al-Qaeda, with whom they're all mixed up together. They share the same ideology, which is essentially a form of Wahhabism from Saudi Arabia. Uh, there, there are no moderate terrorists in Syria. This is simply uh, more lying from Ankara. The Turkish PM also stated that they won't let the Syrian town of Azaz fall to Kurdish forces, promising the harshest reaction. What do you think that means? Does this mean all-out war? I hope it does not, but there's no way of telling with a character as erratic as Erdogan if the Turkish military has any sense of self-interest and, frankly, self-preservation. They better ver think very long and hard about what their options are before they follow the orders of this madman to send them into Syria and maybe encounter something that they really don't want to see when the Syrian and Russian forces react. Because I can be pretty sure that if the Turks get themselves into trouble in Syria, they better not think about calling the United States or NATO for help. Although there have been cases in recent months where Turkey has, has pushed this a little bit, you'd, you'd have expected possibly NATO or the United States to try and hold Turkey back on some of its actions, but that hasn't really happened, has it? So they're not going to do anything, are they? I, I, don't th I, I don't think NATO and the United States can really restrain Turkey because of how erratic Erdogan is. But the flip side of that is, if he goes in and he gets himself into big trouble, I don't think anybody is going to come to his rescue. But in terms of um, Turkey being at a, you know, a NATO frontier, it's at the very end of that. The, Euro the European Union is worried about the refugees coming through. President Erdogan and Turkey have NATO, Europe and the United States largely over a barrel, don't they? They certainly have the EU over a barrel on the migrant crisis. But I think there's been enough reported from uh, mostly officials not necessarily named, but expressing the uh, the concerns within the structures of NATO and within the European governments especially, and even within the American government. Mm -hmm. It's one thing when a NATO member is attacked. It's another thing if one goes into an adventure, aggression of another country, gets into trouble and then says, oh, you have to come help us. I don't think Luxembourg or Greece or other countries are going to want to come to Turkey's uh, rescue there, and uh, this is something that would require unanimity. Uh, bringing it back to Azaz, then, with the trucks that we filmed crossing the border that seem to be supplying Nusra-held territory, the bitterness between the Turks and the Kurds has been going on for decades, but right now, with the Kurds having such a pivotal role in trying to hold back Islamic State, Nusra Front, all those uh, guys in that part of the world, do you expect now, with this kind of evidence, countries like the US to step in and at least do something to stop Ankara shelling the Kurds? Well, that's, that's the other problem. I think we will, we will bend their ear. We will try to convince them this is not a good idea, but I don't think that will be successful either. Uh, we don't know how seriously they will actually try to impact the situation around Azaz and elsewhere along their border, or whether they'll simply go through the motions, try to preserve their pride, because they're looking at endgame on their policy here. If their terrorist assets are destroyed, they've invested a lot in them in the last few years, and if that border is completely closed off by the Syrian army and by the Kurds, 
Those terrorists are finished, and Ankara knows that.